Greetings, I am back once again with some quick Amiga content. Picture the scene. It's a cosy April evening. I've really started to relax and enjoy my vintage tech. A short round of SimCity before bed has become a pleasant habit, and I've begun to trust this 30-year-old tech uh, and that it will work reliably. The CRT's been behaving itself. The Amiga's got a brand new power supply that I made. In fact, I'm so content... I decide to take a picture, this picture, to post on social media. Aren't the colours lovely and warm, and the scene so enticing? So of course, minutes later, there's a, a soft pop sound, and the unmistakable declining whine of a hard disk powering down. And then the game crashes. Welcome to Retro Living. In this video, I'm finally getting round to try and fix this thing. The Amiga's healthy. It's just the external hard disk that lacks power. Uh, I've opened it up and I can see the internal fuse has popped. I always knew I should have gutted this thing like I did with the Amiga power supplies, but sometimes, you know, you just want to use a thing and enjoy it. So I'm going to replace the power board with another new Meanwell board, but it's a little trickier in this thing. Uh, and of course, I don't know for sure whether the power supply just broke or whether something went wrong with the hard disk and that caused the fuse to blow. So, as usual, the modern power board is going to be a, a much better thing to test things out with. You know, good short circuit protection and overload and everything else. Uh, but going to be a frustrating experience if I do the work and then it doesn't actually get me the hard disk back. Oh well, here we go. Okay, so this power supply presents some different issues to the Amiga one. Uh, the Amiga one uh, was a lot taller. Um, you know, this is still quite long and wide compared to the new power supply, but it's not nearly as tall. Uh, and it has a couple of extra mechanical issues. So you've got to fit everything in. And also it's got this uh, socket on the end that's mounted to the board, but presented externally. There's no way to attach this to the case without it being mounted on a board. So my initial thought was, well, I'll uh, I'll check where all these holes are, and like remove this, cut out a new board, uh, and then I can attach this and uh, put a new power supply on the board, and then put it all in. Uh, hey presto, all good. But I don't think there's enough room vertically to fit this thing on top of a board and then put it in here. It would be very tight uh, if it worked at all. So new plan is, as you can see, I've removed a bunch of components here. So my thinking is, I'm going to saw this board in half. So this uh, piece of video is going to act as uh, somewhat of a reference for me to make sure I know where th things go and where all the wires connect to, because this also has a a relay that I'm going to have to fit in somehow so that when the Amiga comes on the relay also powers the hard disk on. I think that should be easy to just wire in in basically the same way as it is in here. Uh, <laughs> we'll find out. So I've already desoldered everything. Uh, next I'm going to try and cut the thing up and then I'll have this uh, sort of free mounted inside. I'm going to have to figure out all the wiring again uh, as with the pre multiple previous PSUs uh, and a, a way of doing the grounding and everything else so that should be fun uh, magic cut to board in half so there we have it the boards in half got uh, some battery power to activate the relay so I can check the relay works and gives me mains power and that it's the right way round now, I do have the colours of the wires the wrong way round, which was a bit of a mistake, but it's the right way round for the power supply. So, here I have connected the new power supply up to the uh, the old bits and pieces, which are going to get me my mains voltage, and I'm just checking that the uh, output actually works, the thing doesn't blow up, uh, and I'm getting the voltages I expect on each pin. And here I've matched the outputs on the round connector. You've got a very helpful diagram on the bottom of the power supply. So I traced them through earlier with a multimeter to check which color wires on the inside of the box 
relate to the pins for which voltage is on the outside. And I've lined them all up with the power supply connector, clipped it all in, put it back together and got a nice original looking bit of kit there. Got to check that it's actually what I expect. Pretty tricky. Got to connect up the uh, relay wires. So I've got those two crocodile clips giving power from the battery pack to <laughs> activate the relay. And I'm just getting my probes in to check each individual output voltage. Ooh, okay, this is the moment of truth. I've done as much testing as I can. Uh, you know, I think I've been very clever using the battery pack to activate the relay and then test all the output voltages. But the only way to know for sure is to use the Amiga and the hard disk and hook them up to this new power supply. And I also don't know if the hard disk unit is broken. You know, did the hard disk unit break and cause the power supply to fail? Or did the power supply fail and cause the hard, you know? <laughs> so I've got to plug it in, hope I don't expend an Amiga on this test, and also pray that the hard disk actually works. You know, if the drive itself has died, that would be a shame, but I can always replace that. But if the whole unit's uh, toast, uh, that would be a real pity. Looks pretty healthy, doesn't it? It got some drive activity, nothing, no smoke escaped. Uh, when I turn the power supply off on the Amiga, the hard disk goes off, relays all working nicely. Oh, if I sound relieved or smug or both, then it's definitely a bit of both. This was kind of complicated, and I was really worried that the the disk was, you know, going to be toast, um, and maybe it would be so toast it would uh, break the Amiga. But. You know, all good. And it has to be said, when the disc originally failed, I knew the A500 Plus, because you'll notice this isn't the A500 Plus. This is a kind of ropey A500 I have lying around almost for parts. I was hoping it wouldn't have any problems with that, but it's a lot of stuff to test at once, and it makes me nervous. Okay, now I also haven't used that CRT monitor in eight months, so I'm going to bring that up here uh, before I turn that on as well. <laughs> So let's see how that goes, and then maybe I'll be back to Cozy A500 Plus. Well, I accidentally turned the monitor on already as soon as I plugged it in, and it didn't blow up, so it's probably good. So uh, let's see what it looks like from the front. Okay, monitor's good. Will uh, will we actually boot into Workbench? Is the data still there? Probably should have connected a mouse. Requires kick says requires kickstart version two or greater, and of course this is a 1.3 uh, original Amiga 500, so I can't actually boot on this thing, but uh, looks okay, doesn't it? Uh, I'll put it back together downstairs then and see if the uh, see if it comes back on the A500 plus. Well, will you look at that? Like I've never been away. Let's uh, just double check that the important things still work. I think that is quite a result. I'm uh, very pleased to see that back. And I think in that spirit, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, have a great New Year and uh, take care of yourselves. I'll see you around.